fermenting versus composting versus worm casting, which is the best option for your soil? Improving soil health has always been at the heart of sustainable gardening. While chemical fertilizers offer a quick fix, they often leave the soil depleted and lifeless over time. Natural soil enriching methods, on the other hand, build fertility that lasts. Three techniques dominate discussions among gardeners, fermenting, composting, and worm casting. Each is powerful in its own right, yet they work differently and serve unique purposes. The big question that often comes up is simple, which one wins? To answer that, we need to dig deeper into what each process actually does for the soil, the crops, and ultimately the gardener. Understanding Fermentation in Gardening When most people hear fermentation, they think of food preservation, but the same principle applies to soil enrichment. In gardening, fermentation is usually done through the Bokashi method, where kitchen scraps are placed in airtight containers with inoculated bran. The waste doesn't rot in the traditional sense, instead it undergoes anaerobic fermentation. What makes this method so appealing is how fast it works. Within two to four weeks, food waste is transformed into a pre-digested material that soil organisms can break down almost immediately once it's buried in the ground. Unlike composting, fermenting allows gardeners to recycle nearly everything, including cooked food, meat, and dairy. This versatility makes it especially practical for urban gardeners or anyone looking to minimize household waste. Another bonus of fermenting is the nutrient-rich liquid produced during the process. Often called compost tea, this liquid can be drained from the fermenting container, diluted, and applied directly to plants. The correct ratio is one tablespoon of this liquid mixed with one gallon of water. In this form, it can be poured at the base of plants to provide a quick, balanced nutrient boost. The dilution step is crucial because undiluted liquid is too strong and may damage roots. The one drawback of fermentation is that the material is not immediately usable as finished compost. It still needs to be buried in soil to complete the breakdown process. For gardeners with limited outdoor space, this can be a challenge. However, when managed well, Fermenting is one of the fastest ways to recycle all types of kitchen scraps into soil food. Composting has been the backbone of organic gardening for centuries. Unlike fermentation, which relies on the absence of oxygen, composting is aerobic. Microorganisms thrive in oxygen-rich environments, breaking down organic matter into dark, crumbly humus. The strength of compost lies in its ability to handle large volumes of organic waste, particularly yard debris, leaves, and garden trimmings. When balanced properly between nitrogen-rich greens and carbon-rich browns, compost piles generate heat that not only speeds up decomposition, but also kills weed seeds and harmful pathogens. The final product is stable, meaning it won't break down further once applied to soil. Instead, it steadily improves soil texture, aeration, and water-holding capacity. However, composting is not the fastest option. Depending on the method, it can take anywhere from a few months to a year to produce finished compost. Regular turning and moisture management are required to keep the process moving efficiently. For those with limited space, the size of a compost pile can also be a limiting factor. Nutrient density in compost is moderate. It enriches soil gradually rather than acting as an immediate fertilizer. Its real power lies in conditioning the soil, by improving structure and microbial life, compost creates a long-term foundation that helps plants absorb nutrients more effectively. Gardeners who think in terms of sustainability and soil longevity often see composting as indispensable. Worm Casting Nature's Fertilizer Factory Worm casting or vermicomposting is where biology does the heavy lifting. Red wigglers or other composting worms consume organic material, and what emerges from the other end is one of the most nutrient-rich soil amendments available. Worm castings are dense with plant-available nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and essential micronutrients, all in a form that crops can use immediately. The beauty of worm castings goes beyond nutrients. As worms digest organic matter, they also introduce beneficial microbes that strengthen soil ecosystems. These microbes continue working long after the castings are applied, protecting roots and stimulating growth. For seedlings and container gardens, 
Worm castings are unmatched because they provide nutrition without the risk of burning delicate roots. The process does take time, often several months before a worm bin produces enough castings to harvest. Worms are also sensitive to temperature extremes and require a stable environment, but for gardeners willing to nurture a worm bin, the payoff is extraordinary. Even a handful of worm castings worked into the soil or mixed into potting media can dramatically improve plant vigor. Liquid fertilizer can also be made from castings. A common method is to steep one cup of castings in one gallon of water for 24 hours, then strain and apply directly to soil or as a foliar spray. This worm tea delivers nutrients in a readily available form and introduces living microbes directly onto plant surfaces, strengthening their natural defenses. When comparing fermenting, composting, and worm casting side by side, it's clear that each has a unique role. Fermented waste preserves nutrients without significant losses, but plants cannot use them immediately until soil microbes finish the job. Compost provides steady nutrition and improves soil structure but is not particularly dense in available nutrients. Worm castings, on the other hand, deliver concentrated nutrition and beneficial microbes instantly. In terms of soil impact, compost is best for long-term conditioning fermentation, is best for recycling diverse kitchen waste, and worm casting is best for supplying targeted immediate fertility. A gardener who relies on just one method may miss out on the strengths of the others. So when it comes to environmental and practical considerations, all three methods are really uh, environmentally friendly compared to just tossing organic waste into landfills. Composting actually has the broadest climate impact since, you know, large-scale compost operations can recycle enormous amounts of organic waste and that helps reduce methane emissions. Fermenting, on the other hand, is more practical for households because it handles food types that compost piles just can't. And worm casting really shines in small spaces, especially if you're growing in pots or raised beds. When making your choice, space, time, and goals are honestly the deciding factors. An urban gardener with very little outdoor space might find fermenting and worm casting a lot more practical, while someone with a big yard is probably going to benefit most from composting. None of these methods is, by default, better for the environment. Each one just fits a different lifestyle and gardening scale. Which one wins? Well, the honest answer is that none of the three stands alone as the absolute winner. Fermentation wins on speed and versatility. Composting wins on soil structure and bulk processing. Worm casting wins on nutrient density and biological activity. But here's the key insight. The methods complement rather than compete. A gardener who ferments kitchen waste can feed it to worms afterward, speeding up vermicomposting. Finished worm castings can be added to compost piles to boost microbial activity and nutrient content. Compost piles themselves can be enriched with fermented waste to accelerate breakdown. Together, the three create a cycle of fertility far stronger than any one of them alone. For the soil, the plants, and the gardener, the real victory comes not from choosing one method but from integrating them. By doing so, you close the loop on waste, build living soil, and grow healthier crops without relying on synthetic inputs. Fermenting, composting, and worm casting are all powerful ways to recycle organic matter into something far greater, fertile soil that sustains abundant harvests. Each method brings something different to the table, and when combined, they create a complete, self-sustaining system. For gardeners serious about long-term soil health and crop success, learning to use all three is the real winning strategy. If this guide has helped you see the bigger picture of soil building, make sure you subscribe to Soil and Crop Central and share this video with fellow gardeners. Together we can grow healthier soils, stronger crops, and a greener future. Soil and Crop Central.